One, you're an artist on record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. And also make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see this episode unedited, unfiltered, uncut, join our VIP backstage pass, all access. It's in Patreon. Links are down below in the description. Here's our conversation with former Guns N' Roses manager, Mr. Alan Niven. It all starts now. Don't touch that dial. The next thing I decided to actually, they were, they were doing something over at Pasha Studios. And Tom wanted me to come over to Pasha and meet the rest of the band and actually say hello to them and, and start to talk to them. And there was a, uh, his name was Hans Peter Huber. Mm -hmm. And he was the engineer there and he was, he was doing the work um, while the owner of the studio was somewhere else and um he he said do you want to sit in on the mixes and i said i'd love to sit in on the mixes i thought that was a very gracious and generous offer on his part and we sat with him while these tracks were mixed and i got a a really good sense of where the band was at that time and it was very intense, had a lot of energy to it, and was absolutely not mass marketable. And my first impressions of GNR, once I'd listened to what they'd recorded, once I'd listened to the demos, once I'd been to see them um, play at the Troubadour, my sense of it was, this is going to be a really intense, interesting underground band. If I can get a tiny bit of professionalism into the matrix, if they don't fuck up and kill themselves, if they don't kill anybody else, that's probably what I'm looking at. Um, so, you know, you can imagine that by the time we were $365,000 into the debut record, I'm sitting there going, I'm never going to see a goddamn penny out of this band, ever. This, this is just too big a royalty hole to dig out of. You know, we've got video costs and tour support costs to come after that. We're going to be half a million dollars in debt before we sold record one. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Why do you just... I was sucked in by then. And one of the things about my state of mind, my, my, my character is that if I commit to something, I commit to something. Yeah. And, and my failing has been, I commit for too long sometimes that instead of saying, you know, this is not really working out for you. It's no, I made a commitment. I'm staying with it. Whatever happens, you work it out. Um, so when people say, oh, I knew Appetite was going to be so huge, they're either delusional or liars, because none of us knew that at the beginning. Um, when it took off like it did, it was stunning, just stunning. It was stunning. I, I mean, I remember being at the Rich Show. Uh, New York City, two nights in a row. I remember that show. It was an insane show. Yeah. You got Steven who plays with soul and heart. Well, Stevie, to be honest, I could never call him a great drummer. I mean, you know, I'll throw you a curveball. Carlton Davis to me is a great drummer. Yeah. Okay. Just not to go rock and roll, but to go somewhere else. But the thing about Stevie, is that he had such an enthusiasm and such an ebullience and such a love of playing in that band. It informed his feel and no one has ever been able to match that kind of feel that he had. No. And, and it was pure joy on his part. 
I agree with you 100%. There's something you can't imitate, and is the heart that he had. I mean, you listen to Appetite for Destruction. That album, and you watch Guns N' Roses today, and I'm not here, I'm not knocking nobody. This, you know, I'm nobody to knock. But but I'll let you do. I'll let you do. But it's not the same band. I mean, that Guns N' Roses, the Ritz, each guy had its own separate identity. On his new Chet Atkins guitar. The punk rocker of the band, Mr. Duff McKagan. <laughs> On the drums, and faster than a rabbit, Mr. Steven Adler. And straight from the depths of hell, Our creature from the Black Lagoon, this is Slash. And one thing, Alan, when I went to see Guns N' Roses, because back then, everybody was separated. Um, the, the, you had your hardcore skinhead people. You had your glam rockers. You had the, 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 the thrash metal. Everybody would go certain nights to see these bands, you know? Guns N' Roses, the audience was a mix. It wasn't just glam people. It wasn't heavy. The hard, It was every... You had every... Every person they have the skinheads to the glam in one room getting together enjoying the music together and and that was a that was a special a special thing and they and i i remember seeing guns play lamores in brooklyn where slash was playing he threw up on stage in a bucket and went right in the back and it was just so reckless Oh, but it was, no, wait, oh, there good. was the night they played the limelight. If you remember, the limelight had kind of a balcony up behind yeah. the, where the drums went at the back of the stage. Yeah. I was up on that balcony looking down and assessing just what kind of a disaster this particular show was going to be. And Slash turns around and he looks up and he sees me. And he puts a shit grin on his face and then just floats back falls off stage backwards into the audience <laughs> and just out of his mind. But, you know, he just looked up and looked, said, wait until you see this. And it was a look on his face. And just, <laughs> Boom. I remember that show and Axel didn't play. They called each guy separate by their names before the show started. Steven Adler, Izzy Stradlin, you know, Duff McGay. So, but then Axel never played. He was mad about something. What, what was the whole thing on that? Do you remember? Who knows? He was mad about something every single day. <laughs> now, when we started out with the cult, and that was a that was an interesting piece of politics to get the cult to. And they started out in somewhere like Moncton, somewhere up in the, on the um, east coast of Canada. And I couldn't get to the first two days, but I got to the third one, which may have been in Toronto. And I just got in off my flight, into the hotel room, drop my bags on the bed, and then there's bang, 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 bang on the door. And I go and open the door and there's Izzy, and he just brushes past me, flops into the sofa and turn arounds and stares at me. I'm going, oh, hello. And I said to him, what's up, Izzy? And the first words out of his mouth were, that motherfucker makes us miserable every single fucking day. And I looked at him and I said, well, he's Axel. What do you expect? You know, I mean, you know, Axel could find something to be upset about in Nirvana, in paradise, heaven. There would be something that got under his skin and made him agitated. When you see Guns N' Roses now, uh, alive and watching them play, what do, what kind of band do you see the, the, from everything? The show, the sound? I don't I don't go and see them live. I have the, no interest in seeing them live. Um, in terms of seeing the band now, I have absolutely no interest. And recently I made a comment that it's not an opinion because it's based in evidence, based in evidence. Hmm. And the evidence is that they've been... It, impotent as a creative force since 1991 
you know, nothing since illusion. Um, again, Chinese demos are a solo record. You know, when Geffen tried to bribe Axel to finish the record with a million dollars, they weren't paying that sum of money to anybody else in the land. They were just paying, paying that to Axel. So that there is evidence that it's a solo record, despite the name on the cover. Um, but there's, there's no interest for me to go and see it now. Um, if I'm being cynical and snide, I say, why would I want to go and see a 60 year old man inhabit a teenage tantrum? It doesn't wear that well. Um, the songs still wear well when you hear them, but performing them, I'm uncertain about. And it's really, really disappointing to me that they piss their prime away. That was Alan Niven. But you know what? We have more of Alan. Just click on the box that pops up right there. And if you want to see this episode unedited, uncut, check out All Access, VIP, Backstage Pass, and Patreon. Links are down below. Until then, everybody, it's only rock and roll, and we like it. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified. And remember, who loves you, baby? We do. Now get out of here, you crazy kids.